So what do you do when you start collecting an army and you let it grow and grow and grow it gets so big that it gets too intimidating to start painting. You start doing the road to Gullum and painting challenge. That's what you do. Hey everybody, Sponge Murphy here. How is all getting on today? And welcome to the very first update video for the Road to Gullman Painting Challenge. In the first video, I set up the rules and I laid out every single model that I'm going to be painting. So make sure to check out that video before you finish here if you want to know exactly what's going on. So for this week's update video, the goal was to paint a five-man Primaris Marine unit. Now five might sound like a whole lot. But I think it was important to start off this challenge with an easy to medium pace. Plus it's been a while since I've challenged myself to something like this. And I gotta come out here and I really gotta get the paint and rust off. So I really think a 5 man unit was the perfect start to this challenge. So with enough talk let's switch down to the table view and have a look at what I did. Alright so here we have 4 of the 5 guys from the unit. All painted up, all finished and based and ready to go. There's one guy left, which is up here. I'm just leaving him for the time being because I'm in the middle of recording a tutorial for him. And I have most of the heavy painting done. I have the base coat and I have uh, kind of the washes put in and some of the silver. So he's almost finished. He's about 50% done. Um, so it should be pretty quick getting through the rest of him. So keep an eye out for that video coming up soon. Uh, hopefully sooner than later. But back to these guys. So I decided to kind of stick to the basic colors i didn't want to overdo it especially at the start so i went with the mccraig blue undercoat or mccraig blue base um, and a nullin oil wash in the recesses which is the longest part really if you do it the way i did it because you have to kind of do individual washes in between parts of the armor and everything but it's well worth it in the end it really sticks out and um, one of the things that i might change down the line is the gold trim on the shoulder pads because I'm not too mad on the gold I use Retributor armor I might switch to a different gold color if I can get this to stay in focus for me there we go hopefully it'll stay um, yeah so as I was saying I might I use Retributor armor on the shoulder trim and on the chest eagle and um, it's it kind of reminds me of the ultramarine colors from like 15 years ago so I might change it to white uh, the chest eagle will probably have to stay the same but I might I think the first company is the white color so I might do that on the shoulder pads and um, one thing I just noticed now that I do have to put some transfers on them you don't get transfers with the warmer conquest but I should have some lying around and I'm gonna stick them on the shoulder pads instead of trying to do some freehand but it took me a while to get back into the painting groove but I got but I'm pretty happy how much I've got done and the standard of them. The only thing I'm a bit annoyed with is the plasma gun. I think this is a plasma gun. Plasma rifle maybe. I wanted to try and get some half decent effect on the gun part here where the red is. But it just wasn't working. So I just left it for now. I might come back and finish it up uh, later on. Because I know I'm going to have like another, maybe another two of these guys to do. So as I get further down they might get better as well. So and I kept their bases pretty basic as well. Just kind of a, a grey rocky base that I'm going to add more onto. I wanted to add like some rocks and skulls. But I only remembered about it when I was like halfway through doing the bases. But I'm really happy how they looked. Yeah so someone, so for you know like for someone getting back into painting. Uh, I think I did kind of an okay job. Some of the highlights are a bit chunky on some parts. But hopefully that will just get better over time. You know, you see kind of the chunkier lines on the helmet here. But they're pretty decent for tabletop standard, definitely. Here's the sergeant. Kind of, he's the only guy where I get to use some flesh colours. Um, definitely wanted to have the red helmet with him. To make it stick out a little bit more. So, yeah. I'm happy how I got on so far. Uh, it's really good to get out and start painting again. But definitely... Oh, I want to drop them. But stay tuned for this guy. This is kind of like a halfway through. Let's have a look at this guy so you can kind of get like a progress shot. Yeah, so this is what he's like before you put the highlights on. Um, I put a lot of null and oil wash in a lot of the recesses to make the rest of it kind of stick out. So, and then it's just, after that it's just tidying up. So I have to go back over it with the McCraig blue and brighten up some of the parts. So it's kind of like, it's a messy part. It's kind of, you have to go from like being real messy to 
tidying up so I have to do a little bit more tidying up especially on the shoulder pads well I think the shoulder pads aren't too bad because once I put a wash over the gold trim you kind of have to tidy up again so I think that's kind of I can just remember now that's why I left the shoulder pads um, a little bit darker there but everything else is looking good this guy all I have to do then is do the, the gold um, and anything else that's in his hands finish the helmet do the highlights and get the camera in focus yeah so he's, he shouldn't take too long but all together I think these guys are looking good I'm really happy how they came across so let me know what you guys think I'm I think I'm on the right track so far paint and rust is coming off I'm gonna be getting through these a lot quicker the next update video will be on Reavers uh, which is these guys these are kind of like the scouts I think of the Primaris Marines so I've already started a little bit I was gonna do like a tutorial for each week but I'm not sure if there's too much of a point in doing a tutorial on this one because they're very very similar to the normal Primaris guys so I might just wait until I do the second unit of these because I'll, like, I'll be a lot more uh, in tune with my painting skills and I might just record it then so I'm not too sure but look forward to getting these guys finished especially the helmets I love them helmets they're fantastic so uh, yeah let me know what you guys think I progress is good so far I'm happy and um, just gotta make sure I keep it up now and get everything finished so um, let me know what you guys think make sure to hit the like button comment and subscribe if you haven't already and once again thanks for watching and I will see you guys in the next video Welcome to the second update video for the Road to Gulliman Painting Challenge. I am full steam ahead. I am keeping this on track. Even though this is getting recorded on a Sunday, a video had to get put up this week. So I'm recording it on a Sunday and I'm hopefully going to get it up before midnight tonight. But I think, as I promised, I'm going to get try and get a video up every single week. If not, there will be two the week after. But I really don't want to do that unless I have to. So this week's progress was I wanted to get three uh, Primaris Reavers done and um, it wasn't a whole lot to do they should have been very similar to painting the, the normal Primaris Marines and um, but a few little different things but it's just time got caught up on me this week I had like 85% of it finished and I just kind of ran out of time near the end so I'm out here tonight getting the last few bits finished on them it's mostly the base and just a few little touch up bits um, but the three of them are finished so let's just switch down to the desk view and have a look alright so here we are we have the three finished reavers in front as I said before time caught up on me a little bit this week so tonight was all about finishing or adding the finishing touches especially the base so I'll start off with this guy now the only thing that's kind of really different or the only thing that really separates these from normal Primaris Marines is there's a lot more black on them if you go by official artwork like you have the like kind of the under armor part you can see a lot more of it especially on the stomach area and you have the black pouches here for like like the pockets and the little gun holster and everything but everything else is very uh, familiar and obviously the face plate which is the bone color which i absolutely love i was a bit terrified getting around to doing it because it's so small it is absolutely it is a tiny part of the model and um, especially those red eyes but i think i did an okay job i'm happy enough with it for now and obviously you have the blades as well so then we have kind of the sergeant model everything is kind of the exact same as the other guy except for obviously the helmet i don't know what possessed me to go with the kind of blonde dirty hair but uh, it kind of it turned out okay i'm happy enough with it and it's different like i didn't want to go like like a dark colored hair it would have been too dark but uh, it kind of brightens it up a small bit bring a bit of brightness into the 40k world and obviously he has a small little bit of skin which is kind of the eyes and the forehead but he was yeah, the three of them are almost identical. Uh, this guy is identical to the first one. But they were a lot of fun to paint. You know, I'd recommend picking up some Reavers if you get a chance. They're really nice. I love the kind of the lighter armoured models. And I only noticed that when I was like halfway through painting these guys. I noticed that like they only have one shoulder pad on their left arm. 
And when I spotted it straight away, I thought, oh shit, I'm after losing a shoulder pad off one of these guys. And I don't know where in God's name it's going to be. And then I looked at some of the artwork and I copped on in. I think they're only meant to have one shoulder pad. So it's a bit weird. They only have one shoulder pad. But, you know, if it works, I would prefer, to, prefer them to have uh, no shoulder pads. Getting to look, have a more of a scout look. But I actually, are these guys meant to be scoutish units? I'm not too sure. But, you know, they were fun to paint. I enjoyed it. The only thing I did differently from the last few models, or from the last week's video, is the base. I did a little bit extra on it. I went with uh, Astro Granite, which is the texture paint. I'll zoom in to get a, a better look at it. And what I did was, I went off it. What I did was... I stuck with the cork base, which is kind of the higher part. That's what I always do. And then I put a bit of the Astro Granite around the edges in around here. Just to give the ground a bit more texture. And I think it looks way nicer than leaving it like a plain flat surface. So that's something that I'm going to be doing with the rest of them uh, from now on. It works really well. So hopefully you guys like this update video. It's keep me on track. It's very, very late getting this one out. But, you know, time caught up me. Nothing I can do about it. And next for next week's video, I'm going to be doing five more Primaris Marines. Now, I know it's, it's uh, another five Primaris Marines. I did that last week. But I have a lot of these to kind of get through. And I really, really want to get the bulk of them. Uh, at, done at the start you know I don't want to get like I think if I leave too many of these near the end I'll really start to struggle a bit Um, but I've started a little bit I got the base colours down and I got the base colours down very quickly because I managed to get the McCraig blue uh, spray crayon spray, spray can not spray crayon um, definitely worth picking up uh, I was a bit hesitant at first. Someone mentioned in the comment last week. Um, so thanks for that. And when I went up to Dublin, I managed to pop into one of the shops and pick it up. Um, you know, I kind of like doing everything by brush. I don't like... I wouldn't like to use airbrushes or anything. But, you know, two sprays of this. And it's awesome. Like, I could do a batch of these, a batch of 20 of these, no bother. So I've already started on these. I got the base work down, which is like the easiest part. And then after that, what do I have after that? Oh, I'm Lieutenant Calcius. So we're going to be moving on to the first hero model in the next uh, two weeks. So let me know what you guys think of this update video. I'm keeping on track. No way am I getting derailed yet. This painting challenge is I'm guaranteed that this is going to be 100% finished. That's what I'm pushing for. And I really, really don't do not want to fail so if you guys like this video make sure to hit the like button and leave a comment uh, subscribe if you haven't and once again thanks for watching and i'll see you guys next video hey everybody and welcome back to update number three to the road to gullum and painting challenge now if you're not familiar with the rules for this painting challenge make sure to check the description below all the information is going to be on that it's a fun challenge it's something that's keeping me on track to keep me busy over the summer and i'm still going i'm still going strong in the first week we had five premieres marines to paint up in the week we got that finished the second week we had three reavers we got that finished and in the third week it was another five Premier's Marines. Now I wanted to put five Premier's Marines in this week because I wanted to get a lot of the bulk out of the way before I get to the a lot of the cooler characters, a lot of the cooler models. So it's nicer to get the bulk out of the way so it doesn't start dragging me down the further I get along on the painting challenge. But I got the five Premier's Marines finished just about. So uh, let's switch to the table view and have a look. Alright, so here we are, we have the five premieres guys all finished up. Um, not really a whole lot of a difference from the first five that I did. I think the first five I might have had one plasma weapon, but there was two in this one. But if we have a look at the better detail. So you can see that I kind of, I might have went a bit lighter with the highlights with these guys, simply because I'm getting better at fine tuning the better highlights. So. I kind of just picked certain points instead of trying to do a lot of edge highlights over 
a large area so like probably just like the corners here up on his elbow kind of the sharp corners around the parts of his waist and everything but other than that it's very similar to the other first five guys that did the only big difference is I tried something different with the base instead of just doing a cork base I put uh, what was the name of it? Uh, Astronite Astro Granite sorry um, like I did with the Reavers, I put the Astro Granite all over the edges next to the cork base and it's 10 times better than just having plain cork base and I went over it with a lighter dry brush, I'm pretty sure it was Screaming Skull as a dry brush to bring out the edges to highlight them a little bit more it's a little bit too much I think but it's just a little difference to kind of separate the units and um, again instead of just using like a lighter grey I kind of went with the kind of palish colour I think you'd describe it but it worked out really well so the only major difference is we had these two guys with the plasma weapons now I tried to do kind of a little glow effect with the plasma guns and it's it's okay it would do for tabletop standard but I wanted to get it a little bit better than that so I think I'm going to come back to it once I've done a little bit more research and once I've started to practice it a bit more and I might just touch up the plasma parts on the weapons again but other than that they're looking good and I'm happy with them they turned out okay you know just took a little bit of time the only thing I did with this guy that was different is instead of having a bald head, just it was literally on a whim, just as I was nearly finished, I just painted his top of his head grey instead of just giving him a plain bald head. So it looks like he has a little bit of hair. So that turned out pretty okay. And again with the plasma weapon glow. Um, I'm going to have to do a little bit more research, a little bit more practice to get that nailed down. And then I think I'll come back to it and... I'll, f I'll uh, get these guys redone. Just the tips of the plasma weapons. Now, with these five guys finished, I'm going to start moving on to a lot of the different models. Like, I'm not going to do any more playing Primaris, Marines, or Reavers for a while. So, like I said in the last video, the next thing I'm going to be working on is this guy, which is Lieutenant Calcius. Now, this is a hero model. It's a great looking model. He looks fantastic. I love the pose. So I'm going to be working on him this week. Now he's pretty... Most of them is pretty standard. It's like a lot of the same for the prim, from the Primaris Marines. Except he has a few little more details. The shoulder pad. Um, this kind of purity seal thing here on the back. So just little minor details. And of course the sword here as well. Now this is... I'd imagine a power sword. Maybe it might have a different name if since he's a character. But what I really want to do is, if I can get a little thing here to point. I want to get this section here to do a nice little glow. To get the look of a power sword. So what I might try and do is get a little bit of a object source light. And so this will be like a, like a bright blue. And then it will kind of put an effect all around here. And maybe up along this arm as well. To try and make him stand out instead of just looking like a standard marine. Although his base is way bigger than the other guys. So I'm really looking forward to getting stuck into this guy. I love this model. He's so cool. And uh, yeah, that's going to be it for this update video. So I'm still going strong. I'm really happy. So if you guys like this video, make sure to hit the like button, comment and subscribe. Uh, I love getting your feedback and once again, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Hey everybody, welcome back to update number 4 of the Road to Gullum and Payton Challenge, right? So the first week we had some Primary Springs, second week we had some Reavers, Third week we were back to doing some more Primaris Marines. So this week I wanted to do something different. Not completely different, but different. So this week's update video is going to be, I'm going to be showing you guys the Lieutenant Calcius model that I painted. Now including the first, well including this guy, that brings the total so far to 14 models. So we're moving along at a steady, play, steady pace. I think there's roughly about 60 or 70 models. So 
you know, we've got a, a nice little start to it. That's why I wanted to get a lot of the Primaris Marines done and out of the way. So we have 10 of them. We have 13 if you include the Premier or the Reavers. So um, it's nice to paint a singular model this week. So, you know, he's, a lot of parts of them are very similar. But at least I've got to spend a bit more time working on the model. Uh, rather, or, or working on a single model rather than working on a five-man unit. So with that, let's switch down to the table view and have a look at this week's model. Okay, so here he is. Now one of the main differences from this guy is he has a sword and there's a little bit of white on him. So you have a little bit of white here on the shoulder pad, a little bit of white on the knee pad. The base is massively bigger, I think. Roughly guessing, I don't know, 28 millimeter, maybe 30 millimeter for the other ones, but this one is much bigger. In fact, if you try and put them into the painting handle, you literally have to spread it out as far as it can to just just about squeeze the base into them. So let's have a look at what I did. So obviously the color is a little bit different from the other few. I went with a little bit more of a brighter color. So I did the McCraig blue base and then I did a mixture of McCraig blue and Calgar blue, a 50-50 mix. And I used that for the main color after I darkened all the recesses just to try and make them stick out a little bit more from the other guys. So as a comparison, here's one of the sergeants from the other one. As you can see, he's a lot brighter. And spending more time with a singular model instead of like five of them gave me a chance to do that, to mess around with the colors. So, you know, I'm happy with how it turned out. Um, everything else is kind of pretty standard. There's a lot more gold on the back here as well. A lot more little smaller details. The face turned out okay. I wish I'd be able to do a lot more detail on the face. But it, it's kind of tricky. It's not easy to do. For tabletop standard, this guy is, is fine. I'm happy with how he turned out. So, now the power sword. What I wanted to do was kind of have a glow effect coming out of here. Let me get a pointer so I get my big finger in the way. But, you know, it, it, it's going to take a bit more practice to do and I'm going to have to try it down. It's going, I'm going to try it in the future, but I'm going to have to practice it on a few practice models first. So what I did was I gave him a green power sword instead of, you know, kind of the blue effect. And I did that because I didn't want to like, make it look like the color of the armor too much because it would have been that Calgar blue color that I probably would have used. So for now the green power sword effect is okay. I'm happy with how it turned out. It'll have to do though. Um I had a lot of problem trying to do the white here. It's been a long time since I've tried to paint white. Um there's not a whole lot of white on it. It's just like two very specific uh, markings on the knee and on the shoulder. Now the best way to paint white is to literally never use the white paint. So what I did was now the first thing I did was, I don't know, I, I, it must have been like a long night or something. I can't remember, but I literally went in with the white scar and I started painting it. And it turned out a disaster, absolute disaster. So I had to get a cotton swab and start like removing the paint off with nail polish remover. Uh, individual parts here and on the shoulder. So what I did then was I switched to Ultuan Grey and built it up from there. So I went with Ultuan Grey. Uh, no, Celestial Grey and then Ultuan Grey and then I kind of, I tried to dry brush or highlight a little part of the white around it. So the white on it looks a little thick. It looks a little thicker than it should be but you know in the future at least I'll know and I'll do a better job of it then. Um, the base, what I did was with the rest of them, cork base with astro, astro granite along the sides and then dry brushed up to make it look a little bit brighter. And what I did manage to find is that I had a spare deck guard head from the bits from Warhammer Conquest. So I just stuck that on there as well. Just give it a deck guard green with a heavy wash over to make it look really dirty and old. Just to add a little something to the base. And that's going to be it for this week's update video. So uh, Lieutenant Calcius... You know, had a few little trials and trepidations with this guy, but I'm really happy how he turned out, you know. He's, the lighter blue is what I'm really happy with. I'm not going to be doing it uh, a lot a lot more often with uh, kind of units, but maybe for hero characters, definitely. Just to make them stick out a little bit more. So, what's next? I really want to keep continuing with getting a lot of the bulk out of the way. And one of the things, some of the models that I've had for a very, very long time are these guys. 
these are tactical marines 30k tactical marines now these guys are on the list and these are from the betrayal at Calt box set now i've had these for so almost since the box came out and I never really got around to painting a lot of them I got a couple of them done up so I threw these on the list because I really want to go back and do some I hate to say older space marines because I'm not sure if everything is going to go to Primaris now but I, I like the old tactical marines you know it's kind of weird looking at them now since looking at the, like a bigger scale uh, Primaris Marine, but I still I still like him. Everyone likes uh, Tactical Marine. So I have five of these. I've already started basing them up, so I'm going to get five more done for next week's video, and that's going to bring us to a tally of roughly nearly 20. So that's that's almost like 20% of the models done. So then I can focus on a lot more kind of hero models. The Dreadnought. What else is on the list? Um. Oh, I got a couple of word bears that I threw on the list. I know they're a different color, but that's what I wanted to do as well. So, um, yeah, let me know what you guys think of Lieutenant Calcius. How he turned out. You know, I'm happy enough. Tabletop standard. He's pretty decent. I like him. So, um, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. And once again, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Hey everybody, Sponge Murphy here and welcome back to the latest update video for the Road to Gulliman Painting Challenge. Now in this week's video, the goal was to paint five, or four, five tactical marines, but not any normal tactical marines. These are 30k marines from the older Betrayal of Calc box. I had to try and remember the name there for a second. Um, yeah, so it's another five man unit. We're slowly getting through the bulk of it. But stay tuned until the end of the video where you get to see what I'm going to be working on for next week's video. Well, not next week's video, this week's video. I have to upload two this week. So make sure to stay tuned for that. And let's just switch down to the table view. Alright, so here's the five-man unit. All finished up, all based, ready to go. There was a slight delay during the week on getting some hobby progress done. But, you know, these things like this happen and... I finally got to sit back out here um, last night and yesterday and get the finishing touches on these guys. Even today, I just got the bases finished. So, I was getting close to finishing it anyway, so it didn't delay me too much. So, we have two guys, two sergeant guys, without the helmets that it's not going to focus on. So, I'll move. Let's see. Let's separate them. There we go. So, yeah, two sergeant guys. And one has a combi melter or a combi weapon anyway, but it looks like a flamer. A combi melter. I don't know. I, I don't know if 40k weapons anymore. Well, 30k, but um, yeah, he has some combi weapon. It's like it looks like a flamer with a bolter, which is awesome. So what I did was I gave it a bit more of a Agrax Earthshade wash around the metal part here to look like it's been you know burned from the fuel a little bit. There's not much difference between these and normal tactical marines. The backpacks are a little different. You have these little kind of, I don't know, dimpled parts on their armor. But, you know, they were good to paint. It's nice to go back to the smaller models after doing so many Primaris marines. And here we have the heavy weapon. I think it's a heavy bolter if I remember correctly. Yeah, the heavy bolter. There was a bit of a problem with this one because I just briefly spread over these I didn't strip him or anything so there's a little bit of a weird effect on his right arm but other than that it turned out okay bases and all are fine everything's looking good so I'm really happy how these guys turned out especially with the new gold now on his on his right shoulder pad let me see if I can find the right gold now everything I've been doing has been based with retributor armor when it comes to doing gold and with the new Warhammer Con Conquest issue, I managed to get my hands on some Liberator Gold. Now, I did have Liberator Gold before, but it, the paint just completely separated. If you can see the way that's kind of separated on the, the side of the pot there, it looks kind of like gold and orange. Well, if I give that a good shake and open it, it's fine. The paint is still good. It's still okay, but my old pot wasn't like that. When I opened it up, it was pure orange. It was rank looking so with a little bit of liberator gold on let me get my little pointer here my little knife just along the edges here going down along 
it makes such a massive difference to the gold effect when you're painting. Just the whole, just down along here, the slight part on the edges. Uh, it's very subtle, but it makes a massive difference. It will make more of a difference once I get uh, shoulder pads with a lot more details on to fill out like that. But there is some of that Liberator Gold um, along the edges of the thinner shoulder pads as well. So these were fun to paint. It's it's nice. It's it's weird going back to seeing how small these guys. They're not small, but compared to a Primaris Marine, like here's here's this guy. This is a Primaris Marine that I've just finished up for the painting tutorial. And even without a base, but he's on his little stand thing there. He's way bigger. So, the Premier's Marines are really growing on me. I love the size of them. Um, but I, it's hard to turn your back on the smaller tactical Marines. But I enjoy painting these guys with, the, with these and including that painting tutorial guy. That brings the current total up to 19 models for the painting challenge. So, I think there's roughly about 64 models. So we're about a third of the way through, nearly a third of the way through. So I'm making good progress and getting a lot of the bulkier parts out of the way. Like a lot of, uh, like this, like five tactical marines, five premier's marines. But in the next update video, I'm going to be going back to a single character. And it's one that is definitely full of detail. So in the last video, or in the last update one before this, I had Lieutenant Calcius. And in this one... I'm going for the Primaris Captain model. Now this guy, this guy is very detailed. I didn't know how, I forgot how detailed this guy was until I took him out. You know, and there's a lot of stuff on him. So he's going to take quite a, quite an effort to get this guy painted up to a decent standard. But um, it gives me a chance to paint a power sword. So I'm going to have to break out some other swords. To try and get some painting. Some kind of decent effect instead of just going with the plain bulk on metal. Oh god, bulk on metal. That's going back. Lead belcher metal. So instead of just using lead belcher with a null and oil wash. I want to make it a little bit more... I want to make it stick out a little bit more instead of a plain sword. So, let me know what you guys think. I'm happy with the progress. A little bit of a, a bump in the road last week. But, you know, stuff is still getting done. We're moving along. We're doing nicely. And we have another Captain model to do for next week. So, that's very exciting. So, um, with that, let me know what you guys think of the video. Let me know what you think of the painting progress and the painting challenge. If you haven't hit the like button, hit the like button. Subscribe if you haven't. And once again, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next video. Hey everybody, Sponge Murphy here and welcome back to the latest Road to Gullum and Painting Challenge video, alright? So for this week's video, the challenge was to paint up a Captain model. One of the nicest looking models for or from Warhammer Conquest so far for the Ultramarines. Definitely he can be intimidating a bit to paint because there's so much extra detail on him compared to another Primaris Marine. But you know, I got through it. He's painted up. And stay tuned to the end of the video and find out what I'm going to be painting for next week's video. It was going to be some more tactical marines, but I said screw that, I'm going to do something bigger. So stay tuned and we'll see what that is. And let's switch down and have a look at the captain model. Alright, so here he is, all finished, all done up. It was a bit of an effort to get this guy finished because I'm currently sick at the moment. And it was just, my nose is so congested and my head is all fuzzy. It was a bit of a struggle to get the last few bits on him done. But, you know, I worked through it, I got him done. I'm pretty happy how he turned out, you know, the gold looks okay. I'm just, I, at this point, I'm starting to get a little bit tired of painting blue. So, it's starting to become, like, I'm starting to feel the struggle a little bit now. But, you know... It's the, it's the Road to Gullman Painting Challenge. I have to pers persevere through it because I really want this whole project to turn out really well. But, you know, the big things with this guy was obviously his robe. And that I was a bit worried about because the red side, the red side is fine. But it's the other side that had me worried a little bit. The kind of whitish cream. And one of the things that I have to remember, you don't always have to use a shade. Like, the inside of his robe is just, like, I think it was between two or three layers of Rackard flesh, really watered down to get one, to get, like, a solid coat on it. And that was it, you know. I 
really didn't want to do much more than that because it would have messed it up and it's perfect the way it is I'm happy how the inside turned out the outside was pretty simple as well it was just a fist on red with a slight shade just in the recesses of it and then a the highlight of I think it's Wild Rider red and it turned out good I'm really happy so obviously the blue was done the, the actually the, I was gonna say the blue was done the way as the rest of them but it's not it's McCraig blue base and then a mixture of McCraig blue and Calgar blue and most of the higher parts of the armour and um, just to give them a brighter colour to stick out from the rest of the army and then all the metal parts are done you know lead belcher null and oil uh, and then like a highlight after that uh, I usually keep the metal pretty standard I've tried a few different techniques with maybe Drakenhof nightshade instead of null and oil but you just can't beat the lead belcher null and oil combination it's uh, perfect and then of course he has a lot more gold on him compared to a normal Primaris Marine which is my, one of my new favourite combinations. Uh, Retributor armour with a uh, shade in it and then highlighted with Liberator gold. I absolutely love this combination. I'm going to be using it a lot in the future um, for any kind of gold colours. It really brings the gold colours to life. So and then obviously the next thing, the thing that had me worried the most was the good old power sword. So. I was really wanting to do some mad effect on this and sometimes you just have to do things how you normally do it. Instead of trying to do it exceptionally well, if you know you can't really do it a certain way, just stick with what you know and, I, and that's what I did. So I worked out, I layered a couple of blues from light to dark while they were still wet on the sword. Put a Drakenhof nightshade on it to really dry the whole lot of it and then, you know, good old dry brush of scar white very lightly around the edges and it just gives it that shine look and um, that surprisingly worked I was really dreading putting the dry brush on it because any slight mistake would have been too far one way you know it's too much white on it but I'm really happy how it turned out looking at it now and you know that's a technique that I'll probably keep using in the future from now on so it works and sometimes it's just better sticking with what you know instead of trying something that you're not 100% confident with. You know, try things of course, but you know, don't be afraid to stick with what you know. And then we have the base. Let me see if I can get a better angle. Um, so what the base is, you know, with all other uh, models I did for this painting challenge is the cork base with the astronaut granite on it. Grade, null and, wash, null and oil. Shade, dry brushed up with the highlights to get it to pop. But this time I stuck on two skulls. It was just a skeleton warrior skull that I had hanging around on the desk. And then an ogre or an orc skull. That was in, it was like in a little drawer next to me. So I was like, let's just stick them on. Give them something else instead of just a plain flat looking base. And a little bit of Nurgle's rot in the inside of it. Just to add something, a little bit of extra texture. So overall, I'm happy with them. I've said before. You know, he turned out pretty decent, I'm happy. So, um, yeah, let me know what you guys think. So that was the Primaris Captain model. Make sure to let me know what you guys think. Um, I think he turned out okay. But um, let me know what you guys think definitely in the comment section below. I love getting a bit of feedback. So, as I said, what am I going to be painting for next week's video? I was going to paint up five more tactical marines in the word bearer colours simply because I had five tactical marines from the Petrella Calc box and I was just, they were based red so I was just going to paint the five of them up, get them finished and out of the way but you know, I'm kind of getting a little bit fed up with doing infantry models so I decided to change it to this guy now, This is the Dreadnought from the Petrella Calc box I think in this whole painting challenge so far there's only two Models that aren't like, just normal infantry. We've like this dreadnought and we've the big dreadnought that's part of the Warhammer Conquest set. So you know it's it's time to mix it up a bit and do something not completely different, but you know something that's not infantry. So I'm really looking forward to painting this guy up. Um, and the best thing about him is he has three different arms: one arm for his left. And then two different arms for his right. And I magnetized these um, when the first came out. So I'm going to be painting all them arms up. And then it's going to be awesome to be able to change them up. So um, let me know if you guys are looking forward to seeing that getting painted up. And uh, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this update video. We're still going strong with the Road to Gullman Painting Challenge. 
still a while to go on it but you know we're going to get through it so let me know what you guys think leave a comment hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't and once again thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next video Hey there Warhammer family and welcome back to the newest video of the Road to Gullum and Painting Challenge. Now in this video I'm going to be showing you guys the Contemptor Dreadnought that I painted. Now this is from the Betrayal of Calc box so this is one of the 30k Contemptor Dreadnoughts. Absolutely lovely model, it's a fantastic model, I love painting it, it's great to look at. But before I get into it, stay tuned till the end of the video because I'm going to be sharing with you guys what I'm going to be painting next week. But then it's up to you to choose what I paint after that. So I'm going to have a list of four things, four units to choose from. So whatever you guys choose, that's what I'm going to be painting the week after. So make sure to stay tuned for that and to get your vote in. All the details will be shared at the end of the video. So with enough talk, let's switch into the table review and have a look at the Contemptor Dreadnought. Alright, so here he is. Here is the Contemptor Dreadnought. Now, the first thing I thought with this guy is this would be an awesome model to do a painting tutorial on because uh, it's, it's a chunky model. You know, a lot of parts should be a bit easier than painting a smaller model. But literally everything on this model is the exact same colors, the exact same techniques that I used on every other thing I painted, I painted on the Road to Gullman painting challenge. So it kind of seemed pointless to do it because I had just put up a painting tutorial on an intercessor marine and this literally would have been the exact same. So let's just let's talk about it a little bit so first of all i obviously i started off with the mccraig blue all over uh, most of it is on the legs and the front armor and um, then with the null and oil wash in the recesses that i've that's my main go to thing just null and oil in the recesses and um, tidied up then and then highlighted with calgar blue just to, uh, just on the big edges to make them pop a little bit more now most of the back is all metal color so instead of messing with that too much i just went with lead belcher null and oil and then highlights of stormhole silver all over just the big prominent metal parts to help them stick out a little bit more so that was like the back of the legs his entire back uh the weapons uh the exhausts on the top are a little bit different because instead of giving them the null and oil wash i went over with two washes of agrax or shed to give them like a dirty used look instead of just having a, a dark metal look um, the gold again was Retributor Armor, but I went with an Agrax Earthshed wash instead just to make it a little bit darker, to make it a little bit more dirtier. And then with the highlight of Liberator Gold, I have to think about that for a second. Um, and then of course, I'm going to take them off this for a little bit. Just to get them to stop spinning so I can show uh, parts that I'm wanting to talk about. So we have the scroll here, which I didn't write on yet. I did attempt right before painting, but I kind of messed it up a little bit. So I'm going to come back to that eventually when I have to do a couple of things that require like really, really tiny detail. Um, so I'll have it nailed down by the time I get around to doing it. That was a Zandri Dust with Ushat T Bow. Oh no, Screaming Skull. Screaming Bell. Screaming Skull uh, over the wash of I originally I went to a server from sepia the scroll came out red and it, it really did look a little bit rubbish so I changed that out to uh, I painted back over it and I put agrax or shade uh, mostly in the recesses and then screaming skull then on top of that so the main thing with this guy was the base is pretty big, big actually so I put a lot more cork on it than I usually would I put little patches of grass on it as well Um just to add a little bit more detail now you i'm not sure if you can see too much but the legs are dry brushed with mechanics gray because i wanted the legs to look a little bit more dirtier i didn't want to overdo it so it's kind of like like it almost looks like nearly a highlight but it's on the prominent parts of gray so it's like a dusty look on the bottom of his legs now of course one of the things i did with this guy i made this guy I'm going to put him back on the stand here, let him spin around. Now this guy, this model came out, I think, oh man, it was a good few years ago, my wife got it for me. Um, I just never got around to painting it. But I did do a tutorial a long time ago on doing the arms. So, his arms are magnetized, so they come off, that was really handy to get him painted. Uh, so I can switch out. Now I don't know why I magnetized his left arm, because there's only one choice for that. So... I did magnetize both of them, but I did stick on, or I did paint 
the I think it's an auto cannon, but some sort of I can't remember my 40k guns, but it's a like a Gatling cannon. And his right arm, which I absolutely love. I think I prefer this layout or this uh, weapon choice than the other one. But my favorite part is, of course, the arm. I love the little pistol on the inside of it, which I did manage to drill little holes in, which was incredible, incredibly difficult to get, you know, perfect. But I didn't get it exactly perfect, but I'm happy enough with it. But you know, this guy turned out really well. The base is a little bit basic, but I'm happy with it. I could, I could add little parts onto it later on, um, like little details, like weapon parts or something like that. Something mod these broken parts on the end. But overall, I'm really happy how this guy turned out. As I said, there's no point in doing a patent tutorial on it because it's the exact, literally the exact same scheme as the Space Marine Intercessor. So hope you guys like that model, I had a lot of fun painting it. I'm still getting a little bit tired of painting blue, but the grind must go on. The Road to Gunman Painting Challenge has to be finished. So next week I'm going to be painting up a librarian model. And that's going to be a lot of fun, I really love that model. It's a great pose, it's a great sculpt, and it's going to be a fun model to paint. But what am I going to be painting after that? And that's where you guys come in. So I have four choices for you guys to choose from. The first one is three aggressor models. The second choice is a Chaplin model. The third choice is Grand Master Voldis. A little bit different from uh, Pen Ultramarine colors, but a great model nonetheless. And finally, I'm gonna go back to the Tactical Marine size models. This is a Captain model. One of the old kits where I think they were called uh, Space Marine Commander models, where there's lots of different parts to choose from, lots of different weapons. So I have all them bits still in a box, and I'm gonna be painting up all that. Uh, not just the model but all the spare bits as well if it's chosen because I have that guy magnetized so that could be something to look forward to. So that's your four choices to choose from. The places where you can pick are of course this video, Instagram, Twitter and of course Facebook. So make sure you guys choose what you want me to paint next week. So it's up to you. I'm coming to you guys for this. And I'm wanting you guys to give me feedback on what to paint. So hopefully you guys enjoy this. I'm looking forward to seeing what you guys choose. Um, there's, there's a bit of a choice in there. Not everything's the same. So it's going to be interesting to see what you guys pick. So make sure to hit the like button and comment and subscribe if you haven't already. And once again, thanks for watching. And I will see you guys in the next video. Sponge Murphy here and welcome back to the latest Road to Gulliman painting challenge update video but before I start make sure you guys hit that subscribe button and ring that bell to keep up to date with all the Road to Gulliman painting challenge videos so this week's video was to paint a Primaris librarian model it's one of those psycho models with a great hand poking out like that and he's using his psychic powers that's one of the things that I really wanted to get across on this model that I want him to look like he's using the psychic powers. But before I switch to the table view, to find out what you guys chose to be painted next, stay tuned till the end of the video, and then I'm gonna get you guys to vote again to what I'm gonna paint after that. So it's viewers' choices back, and it's gonna be up to you guys to what I paint next. Stay tuned till the end of the video, and I switch down to table view. So here is the Primaris Librarian model, all finished up, all ready to go, and I'm really happy how he turned out. There's a few little things that didn't work, but I changed around, you know, as you do. And I'll go over all the colours that I used as well. So, of course, I had McCraig Blue all over the armour. That's the usual colour that I kind of start off with. McCraig Blue, Nullin Oil, uh, Shade in the recesses, and then any highlights with Calgar Blue. Yeah, and Abaddon Black in the recesses, so you have, like, in the joints of the arms here. Um, any kind of under armour parts, I like to call it. Uh, the robe, now, usually... From the pictures, it's usually a kind of a white creamy robe, but I went a little bit different. I went with Steel Legion Drab, uh, kind of a light brown. It's a really nice looking colour. I really enjoyed using it. With Agrax Earth Shade in the recesses to get the shade in, and then just tidied up then any parts with Steel Legion Drab again. And I highlighted it a little bit with uh, Ushabti Bone just on the highest edges as well. So then we have the gold, of course, which is always Retributor Armour. Uh, this time I went to Agrax Earthshade shade over it, uh, because I wanted it a little bit darker, and then highlighted with Liberator Gold. Uh, the cables I wasn't too sure about, so I just went over them 
with a base color of Everlyn Sunset, which it is kind of tricky to do, especially trying to get a wash over them. But you know, it turned out okay. Agrax Archie again, again in the recesses of that. I did try Reckon Flesh Shade because I didn't want them to be as dark, but it came out this kind of pale red color. And I went over it again with Agrax Archie, sorted it right out. And then the red cable, anything red in it is just my fist on red, so you can see the. Uh, the purity seals were red as usual on that. Um, if it's on red with Agrax or Shade Wash, and then just I didn't highlight it anything brighter, I just went over it with my fist on red again. So, onto the, some of the smaller details. Now, obviously, the face, a little small bit of skin there, that was just Bugman's Glow with a regular flesh shade with Bugman's Glow over it again. So, uh, that's kind of like the basics kind of of the model most of it is just it's just time really to put into it all the basics are kind of pretty handy to do so when it came to stuff like the power sword this was i was kind of experimenting again so what i did this time for the final result was let me zoom in to get a better look what i did was i went with calgar blue over the whole thing uh, and null and oil wash or null and oil shade in the recess here just to make this kind of closer to the handle a bit darker and then what i did was i highlighted well not highlighted i dry brushed up from ultuan gray to white scar just on the edges and any of the kind of higher pieces sticking out and it gives it kind of that power sword look on it as well so really simple way how to do it and it turns out pretty good really quick to do as well as long as you go easy with the dry brush especially with white because you really don't want to overdo it so then the kind of the last thing i really want to do was I wanted to give him a look that he's using some of his psychic powers so if I can get the right angle here if you see his hand it's not just normal blue it's kind of like a lighter color kind of goes from uh, light blue to white and again I did the same effect that I did on the power sword just dry brushed up from Ultuan gray uh, white scar and then on the very edges I went over it with Calgar blue just to make that blue a little bit uh, stick out a little bit further so the look I wanted to give him was as if he's like using the psychic powers and some of these rocks are starting to feel the effect of it like he's lifting these up with his psychic powers so you see kind of that glow effect on the edges as well so I had a lot of fun painting this guy um, the main thing the main thing was uh, getting that kind of power sword look effect and the use of him using his psychic powers on the rocks so I think it turned out okay um, I would have liked the rocks at a bit of a, a tighter angle, you know, make them look a bit more looser, but it was really tricky to get these to glue and to stay, so they're finally set, so I was happy with that, they'll have to stay like that, but other than that, you know, he turned out pretty decent, I'm happy, and um, the base again was just cork with Mechanica Standard Grey as a base coat, null and oil wash, and then dry brushed with, uh, what's that dry brush paint I have, Dawnstone. And it's the exact same with the rocks and it's the exact same with uh, the glow effect I did on them for the sword as well. Ultuan grey, white scar and then a light, really light dry brush of Calgar blue on the edges. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that model. I had a great time painting them. So let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. So alright, what did you guys choose to paint next? We had four choices and we had chances to vote on Twitter and on Facebook and on here as well. And by a big landslide, the Chaplin won. Now I wasn't too sure about painting the Chaplin. I was, you know, I've seen the Chaplin a hundred times. But once I took out the model and I had a look at it to get ready to paint them, this is a fantastic model. So I kind of understand now why so many people picked the Chaplin model. And it's nice to get away from painting blue so much as well, even if it's just for one model. So massive thank you for you guys for choosing that for me. So again, I'm giving you guys the choice for what I'm going to be painting next. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of keep the characterish type of models or maybe the units that I only have like three models for you guys to pick. So for this week, I'm going to give you guys the choice of three aggressors. They're the big mechanized or mechanized uh, space marine guys. I really like these. I was really surprised to see these with the Warhammer Conquest because I thought these were kind of like really expensive models and they're pretty big. Um, and then of course the other model is going to be a 30k Terminator Sergeant model. This is part of the I was going to say the Road to Gulliman. This is part of the Betrayal of Cal box. And I absolutely love the Terminators in that. And I had them all built up with close combat weapons. So when I was going through them, I noticed that, you know, it's not just four models and a sergeant. It's like four models or five models and then another sergeant model with that, I think. So there are two fantastic choices there, I think. I would gladly paint up any of these. I'd kind of be hinting more at 
maybe the 30k Terminator a little bit just to see what he's like to paint but the aggressors are a great choice as well I'd really look forward to painting them so hopefully you guys will go out and choose you can either choose here or I'm going to put it on Idik Beer's Facebook page as well so I'll put a link to that in the description below and then I'll have it on uh, Twitter as well so hopefully you guys like this video I haven't rambled on too long but make sure to hit the subscribe button and ring that little bell button as well it's really important and once again thanks for watching make sure to hit the like button and I'll see you guys in the next video Hey everybody, Sponge Murphy here. How is all getting on today? So welcome back to update number 9 on the Road to Gulliman Painting Challenge. It's hard to believe that the next video after this is going to be update number 10. That means I've been doing this for roughly 10 weeks. I'm still on track. I know sometimes videos go up a little bit later than usual, but in general, the challenge is still going strong. I'm still going and it's been a blast. Some of these models have been fantastic. So when I get to update number 10, I'm going to ask you guys... A question on that but stay tuned till the end of the video to see what that question is going to be and also stay tuned to the end of the video to see what I'm going to be painting for next week and what you guys voted on so let's switch down to the desk view and see what I've done all right so here he is the chaplain is all finished I was just thinking is this the primaris chaplain or is it just a chaplain because on the conquest book it just says chaplain but he's pretty big He's not a little small guy, or maybe the chaplains are this size anyway. I'm not too sure. But anyway, everything on this is totally different from painting the other Primaris Marines, color-wise. Because this guy, in the original pictures that you see, everything on a chaplain is all black. His armor is black, and the robes are black. So what I did, if you can remember back I mentioned, I wanted kind of a light and dark theme to the model. So I wanted to have a light robe with the dark armor. And I wanted to have a little bit of a nod to the ultramarine colours as well. So with the robe I went with Rackhart Flesh and just a very very light wash in some of the recesses. Um, maybe a bit too light, it's barely visible. But there's a nice solid colour on it so I didn't want to do anything much more than that. Obviously the armour is Abaddon Black. The metal, the usual lead belcher, null and oil. And Stormhole Silver over that. Gold with Retributor Armor. Um, but the bones in the chest is what I changed up the color. I went over them with Zandri Dust. Just to separate the color from the robe. And then with an uh, Agrax Archshed Wash. And then I just highlighted the parts with uh, Zandri Dust again. So, you know, it turned out really nice. So, his left shoulder pad, as you can see coming up. That's to represent the ultramarine colours and another little nod to him as well was obviously the, the handle of the staff as well but the kind of scarf thing he has coming down I painted them blue to fit with the ultramarines as well. So other than that everything is pretty straightforward. The only other colour that was added in was on the book on the left side of his hip that's coming up now. That was Mephisto on red with uh, the silver colours on the edges on the corners and then I'm pretty sure it was uh, Zandri dust on the inside of it for the pages. Uh, Agrax or she had wash over it and then just kind of highlighted it up a little bit as well. So overall it's a really nice model. I enjoyed painting this guy. I'm happy there's only one of these usually in an army. I'm not sure if you can take two chaplains because he's very very unique. He is, he stands out, he looks good, it's a great pose, you know, he looks really nice and I'm happy I didn't go with the black robe because you would have had the whole thing just all black so I kind of like the white in it as well. So yeah, I'm happy how he turned out. So that's it for the Chaplin model, fantastic model, love painting him. Thank you for voting on the Chaplin model, I can definitely see why you guys picked him. Um, I probably would have left him till near the end because I wasn't really fond of the model until I got my hands on the paint. So massive thank you for that. And for next week's video, you guys picked to paint the three aggressors. So I'm going to be painting them up for next week's video. So oh, that's going to be update number 10. So what I'm going to ask you guys is, I've been painting the Primaris Marines from the Conquest side for this challenge. Now, do I take a little small break? and start painting up some of the terrain. So, do I take a small little tiny break for maybe every third or every fourth video and start painting up bits of the terrain that came with it? Or do I just keep going blasting through with the Primaris Marines? I'm kind of, I don't mind changing the videos 
to doing a little bit of terrain that came with this safe. So that's why I think maybe like every, maybe one video every month, not every second one or something like that. Like so, one terrain video and every four videos. So let me let me know what you guys think about that. It's a little change. If you don't want me to change it, then I won't do it. Then I'll definitely keep the just doing the Premier Marines, just them and we'll get to the terrain maybe after the challenge so if you guys like this video make sure to leave a comment in the comment section hit the like button and subscribe if you already haven't and once again thanks for watching and i'll see you guys next video Sponge Murphy here and welcome back to the latest update video for the Road to Gullum and Payton challenge. If you guys want to stay updated with the challenge make sure to hit that subscribe button and ring that bell. So this is update number 10 and I asked you guys last week is will I take a small break between videos and start painting up some of the terrain that came with Warhammer Conquest and you guys answered and I'm going to talk about that at the end of the video so for now I'm just going to show you guys the three aggressors that I painted up so let's switch down to the table view and we'll have a look at them alright so here we are we have the three aggressors all finished up ready to go I love these models they look bulky they look like big Hulk busters almost and um, it would have been nice to see what they're like with different weapon options but apart from that they look fantastic and I really do like these guys but the bad thing is painting wise these guys are identical to 90% of ultramarine armies especially the intercessors the only difference in the color that I could really tell is that there's more silver and more gold on this everything is the exact same the blue the gold the silver uh, a little bit more red on this guy because he's uh, like a sergeant guy but other than that um, they're pretty simple to paint there's not really too much I can add into this without kind of repeating myself what I've talked about before so there is like more details on the base there's like little things um, like a, a broken gun there's like a broken servo skull and a statue piece but other than that they're, they're identical to intercessors but they're great models they look fantastic maybe if I had a bit more time I might have done these uh, battle damaged just to separate them a little bit more stop them from getting a little bit more or stop them from looking more newish and give them a more battle damaged look I would have really loved to have tried that and um, but just, it just time wasn't on my side now one of the things I am definitely going to be changing going forward is using the, the gold uh, more particularly the shade that I use because I always base it with retributor armor and I was kind of going back and forth between uh, Reikland Flesh Shade and Agrax Earth Shade to use in the recesses but for definite now I'm going to be sticking with Agrax Earth Shade because it looks so much nicer in the recess part and then with that Liberator Gold highlight over it um, that's, well for the colours that I have that's the perfect combination to use for these guys Alright, so hopefully you guys like them models. As I say, there's not a whole lot of difference in painting these compared to like an Intercessor model or a Reaver. But they're really nice looking models. They're big, they're bulky. Like I said, they're like Hulkbuster models almost. As I said earlier, I'm going to talk about the terrain. Now I asked you guys, should I kind of do um, every couple of videos about the terrain that came with the set? And it was a resounding yes. Everyone was like, yeah, if you want, take the break. It's nice to change to something different. The challenge is still going to be gone. It's just kind of every now and again. It's just I guess some of the, it's like there's a lot of terrain that came with this safe and it's up there and it's not getting anything done with. So I think it, it feels like it should be part of the Road to Gullum and Painting Challenge because like 85% of the models that are going to be getting painted are all from this site, the Warhammer Conquest site. So every fourth video I'm going to be doing a piece of terrain from the site. So what I'm going to do with the terrain is I'm going to split it all up and work out what I'm going to be painting in each video. But for the next one, on update number 11, I'm going to have done two of the containers. Now these are, they're big, there's three of these all together, well there's three for now anyway, I don't think there's any more on the site. But these are big, they're bulky, they're really nice to put in the background to get some nice shots of the models. And really they shouldn't take too long to paint up. So I'm looking forward to getting these, it's about time I started having some Warhammer 40k terrain and there is actually I was just thinking there is little guns to go on top of these they're they're around here somewhere they're in a box somewhere put away for these so I'm going to paint them up as well I took I think I took them off because I wanted to stack them up on the shelf so um yeah so 
thanks to you guys for choosing to do the terrain. So next week's video will be two pieces of terrain painted up. I can't wait to get these containers done and to use them for background images to get painted, uh, to take pictures as well. So if you guys like these videos, make sure to hit the like button, comment and subscribe. Ring that bell as well to stay updated. And once again, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next video.